How have you been helping yourself to expand your ability to think over the years? There's always somebody who knows more than you do. Who are those people? Uh, so that is one of the things that I have believed in, um, I think, my whole life. Uh, I want to learn something. Who knows this thing? Somebody knows it, uh, and they're, at least they know it better than I do. And I want to find those people. And sometimes that means uh, uh, reading a book. Sometimes that person is dead, and they lived 100 years ago but they still have that knowledge. And so a book can do that for me. Sometimes they are here today, but it's going to be hard for me to reach them. So maybe I read their articles or, or things or, or and again, reading or watching their videos or, or listening to their podcasts, depending on how you like to get information. And then other times I'm going to try to have a personal conversation with that person. I've done that many, many times. And so one of my kind of rules <laughs> when I'm trying to do something if I hear it three times that this is the thing to do, I try to take action on it. So I'm two of the books I'm reading right now, it's because I've heard of one of them. I heard it again. I heard it again. That third time, like, I got to read it. <laughs> you know, I'll learn something. Too many people have told me you need to do this. Like, okay. And so to learn to who is it that knows what it is that you want to do, find those people. And if you truly exhaust that and you know there isn't anybody who knows, okay, now you're in a place of creativity and invention and you know that that's a good place to do. So is there anybody with anything similar that you can learn? There's, there's, so there's always somebody who knows if there isn't, now it's time to be creative. Now it's time for innovation and creating new ways. And so there's still something you can learn from other people who are good at innovation and creativity. And so as you are needing to do that, you can also learn, okay, what are the kinds of questions they ask? So there's always somebody to be learning from. And that's the way that I approach that. Uh, by going and studying topics that do not seem to have anything to do with what I normally focus on. So, you know, my role, my job is to help businesses and people be more successful. I, I focus mostly on things like leadership and strategy and teamwork. But I do from time to time read uh, physics and cosmology and poetry and history, uh, things that are, that are far out of the realm of what I normally focus on. And it's surprising how often that something in an obscure area of poetry uh, will, will influence the way I think about something that I do in my work every day. So being willing to read things, to, to study, read, think about things that are out of your comfort zone and possibly, I hate to kind of say this, but maybe not even that interesting to you, but forcing yourself to say, like physics, I don't understand it or I didn't understand, I still understand it very little, but I've read enough that it at least has expanded the way I think about science and other things. I guess first uh, is open mind. Uh, trying not, although it's hard sometimes, to be too judgmental, to give the benefit of the doubt before you make your decision or your judgment about something or someone. I don't think anyone who can travel the world and see other cultures can enjoy it unless you have an open mind and accept there are other ways of doing things, even other ways of thinking about time, for example, or about how you treat the elderly or, or whatever the topic might be. So open mind and not too judgmental. Uh, I think it's important to develop your skill of lateral thinking, not to be funneled, have your thinking funneled into one direction, but to open your mind and look for relationships that might add to your understanding of a situation. And um, I guess the third and thing I would say is uh, I'm a glass half full person. I usually try to see the positive in situations, the positive in people until proven otherwise. And I like to be very optimistic in uh, taking my approach to any business opportunity or any personal relationship until I'm shown that, you know, maybe I was wrong and or maybe I should adjust my thinking. There's a great quote that I've used in speeches before. 
And it's ascribed sometimes to Abraham Lincoln, but I'm not really sure. And he was asked, what's the difference between a pessimist and an optimist? And he said, a pessimist sees the difficulty in every opportunity, while an optimist sees the, the opportunity in every difficulty. And I guess I've developed a way of thinking very optimistically. Recently or ever since? Over time, over time. I, you know, moving to France, then moving to London, and then to, to um, Finland, and then especially to Turkey, which was quite a culture shock. Uh, you, learn, you have to learn to be more tolerant and open-minded. Uh, there are many different ways that things get done that are different than the way you were grown up to think they get done. And uh, you can fight it, uh, which could be aggravation and anxiety and not lead to great well-being. Or you could learn to understand it. Not, I'm not saying you change your values about what's important in life but you learn to understand that maybe you need to take different pathways to get the same thing done in a different culture, in a different environment. Wow. How have I been expanding my ability to think? Um, <laughs> that's such a big question. And I feel pressured to answer it in a, in a big and lofty way. And that's not disappointing. Um, you know, so, um, I think, one way that I've been trying to think about this to sort of expand my ability to think um, is truly to to slow down. Um, I I have this is really advice that's come from one of my one of my favorite collaborators, Cassie Holmes. Um, and it's work that other people have talked about as well, but you know, making time for deep thinking, Mm -hmm. um, you know, versus sort of fast thinking, if you will. Um, there are a lot of things that pop up in my everyday life that are, that seem urgent and I can sort of, you know, do quick responses to. And I often have to stop myself from, you know, just digging into the urgent and slowing down mm -hmm. so that I have the ability to actually think and, you know, to your quote, expand my ability to do that. Um, and it's hard. It's really hard because, you know, I feel like when you get to a certain point in life, it's like I've got little kids and I've got my work and family and, you know, <clears throat> there's so many different things going on that it's easy to kind of do like a little bit here and there, a little bit there. And, you know, and I, I have to keep reminding myself to sort of slow down and try to just focus on one thing because that results in deeper, you know, more expansive thinking, if you will. I, I read at least a book a week and have for probably the last 30 years. Okay. And okay. so curiosity is the answer. What don't oh, yes. I know? What, what can I learn that will make me more effective? And you start to realize that you know, after you've read a lot of books and, you know, the placeholder behind you, interestingly, is a whole bunch of books. And you start to pick up themes and ideas that are consistent and they change you. And one of the things that I've done for the last 30 years is whenever I read a book that's nonfiction, so first of all, I read almost mostly i don't really make time to read fiction although there's nothing wrong with fiction i just tend to lean into nonfiction. i will write all over my book and then i will type up notes that i can read later and so i'll just show you um this is you know, this is just a small sample of book summaries that I have I'm, for every book that I've read over the last 25, 30 years. So what happens is when I go on an airplane and I'm traveling, I'll take 10 of those with me and just go through them. And it reinforces 
you know, you don't remember everything that you read in a book, but mm. I have the notes of what I thought was most important and it's changed me, you know? And by the way, I take those and I give them to people so that it's not just, because it's a time intensive thing. But when I give them to other people, particularly people who work for me, I'm influencing them. So it's a it's a benefit for me to say, hey, I I I read I read the book, I typed up the notes. Would you like them? And people are like, yeah, I don't have to spend all those hours that you did. Sure, you know. But now I'm sharing information, and now I'm having a conversation with, with someone about something that I read. So we're reinforcing it, and they're going, well, what about this? And so curiosity is the answer. Beautiful. Uh, I'm I'm always learning. Um, I work with very smart people every day. Um, I have a firm belief that everyone has an inner genius. Uh, I think you have an inner genius. I have an inner genius. I think, you know, a lot of people around me have an inner genius and an inner genius is something that's unique to her. And I am always, always on a path to want to discover what your genius is, because if I can understand what your genius is, I can then partner with you to do some amazing things going forward. Um, because I'm very clear, I don't know everything and I'm not the smartest guy in the room, but I'm very clear. I think there are a lot of other people out there who are incredibly bright and I'm trying to either unlock that for them or I'm trying to discover it so that I can learn from them. And, and that, that's, that's what I, 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 I want to do every single day. Uh, as a leader, and that's how I want to stay sharp, and that's how I want to grow. It's not always easy to practice what one preaches. You know, it, it, it's quite difficult sometimes. And I think, you know, we we are hypocrites ourselves as humans. And I've I've been on a lifelong quest to understand why humans are hypocritical, including myself. Um, but one of the things I do, there's several things I do actually. I I have a almost a morning routine that. I, I read actually, um, and I'm, I'm not advocating for the, these these people in any way, but they've helped me in my quest. But um, Trice Pritchard, uh, U squared, uh, is a concept where it, it talks about how do you position yourself for uh, exponential growth, uh, quantum leap, right? And it, it's kind of a uh, a book and a, and a philosophy that that really helps me ground me and keep me focused and, and believe in my capabilities. So I, I kind of read read some of the material from, from that individual's work. I'm a, Which I'm a huge, I, I'll show you, I don't know if you can see my screen, but um, this. Um, I can see you, you too. U squared, if you put that into okay. Google, um, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll find that out very, very easily. And it's a high velocity formula for mu multiplying your personal effectiveness in quantum leaps. I, re I read it. It's one page per chapter, and I read it really uh, as a way to to nourish me. To you know, think of this as the foundation, the scaffolding that helps me do what I do. And so that that philosophy really helps me. Um, another thing that I do, and I'm I'm a real proponent of Pema Chodron, who's a Buddhist monk, and she she writes about you know she's got a lot of different books about embracing ambiguity about being comfortable in in uncomfortable situations and and sometimes that helps me at a spiritual level to keep me focused on this this path and then i then i'm an advocate of bob proctor and a lot of the work around bob proctor and thinking into results uh, and that, that again those three different sources help me on my journey as part of a, a daily ritual and and the other thing i do ha huh, is i I'm always looking at where my blind spots are. And I use a tool called the Jahari window. And I, and I can send you in the show notes or, or whatever makes sense. But the Jahari window, I teach this to leadership teams across the world. And if I don't use it myself, I'm a bit of a hypocrite, right? So I, I use it to understand and try to understand where am I not paying attention to? Where, what, what feedback am I getting that I need to address? and that I don't want to address, that I'm scared to address. Why am I scared to address it? And then I go deeper and I ask myself some discovery questions. So I'm always looking at 
where I can improve, where I can enhance my my capabilities. And I don't mean just more accolades and more qualifications. I mean self-improvement. And so for me, becoming aware of some of those triggers that I have and some of those things that, that hold me back. Um, you know, I, I, I sometimes look in the mirror and I, I, you know, Mel Robbins, I don't know if, if you uh, know Ro Mel Robbins' work, but, you know, just high five yourself in the mirror, right? And show yourself that you love yourself. These are real things. Anyone listening to this when it comes out will know me. If they know me, they know exactly what I'm talking about because because I talk to them so much about it um, because I'm real and I'm accountable for being real and I'm a fired human at the end of the day, right? So so they're the things that I, I leverage in, in my, my world, actually, that strengthens my ability to do this stuff and take this further out into the world. There's a basic truth, I believe, inside of all of us individually. And it isn't about, you know, truth versus lies or something. It's about, um, as I think it was Shakespeare said, to thine own self be true. And um, and there is there is a uh, there is a wiring inside of each of us that we need to understand. And I would say that uh, my journey over these 65 years and you have you have explored that journey in ways no other interviewer has done. So I want to congratulate you on just a wonderful interview. You uh, you have gotten me to tell stories that no one's ever asked me to tell before all in one episode. So I am going to treasure this interview, okay? Wow. Because, uh, and I want to share this with people, my family even, because this will give them deep insights into who I am as a person. Um, but along the way, what I learned is that life, and particularly entrepreneurial life, is a journey of self-discovery. It is a journey to self. And it's amazing how often in our lives we deny who we are as people. We deny how we are wired. We deny, we, we believe there's something wrong with us and we need to change to conform how the world thinks about us. And I would say my journey of thinking was to figure out why am I so troubled in all of these other areas of my life? What is it that's bothering me? And what could be done about it? And so I think we just simply need to pour our excess energy, our time, just in thinking about how to make our world and the world a better place. And that, in fact, if we are driven by a need to leave the world a better place than we found it, uh, and that we have a unique contribution to make, uh, that we should spend our time thinking about who are we? How do we use who we are to make that contribution to the world? And how do we think about how we deny those other voices that say, no, you're just dreaming. It can't happen that way. You need to go conform to the way the world wants. And so uh, that would be my general thoughts on how each of us should think about what the future holds and what we want it to hold for us. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll share something that is probably atypical. I mean, you're going to get a lot of expertise around, you know, how to think better and all that. The one thing I would ask you to think about in terms of expanding your thinking is put a question to yourself mm. in a very positive, not in like a heavy, heavy way, but in a positive way, like, you know, how if if I if before you go to bed, ask yourself, how might I do whatever I'm trying to do? And especially if I had all the money in the world, all the resources in the world, or in fact I had a magic wand and I could do anything I want, okay? And then about two things. The time before you sleep, sometimes you have a great imagination. And you'll be surprised that sometimes when you sleep, you come up with ideas and solutions. Put a notepad by your bed and write them down when you wake up. Like, hey, I came up with this, this interesting new solution or this new business idea. 
and you know, sometimes, oh God, these are really stupid, but sometimes you'll come up with some of your best, craziest, funnest ideas during both the time before you fall asleep and when you, wake, uh, when you dream and write them down when you wake up. One of the best things about working with Jeff and Andy, and there's a, a monthly live stream I host along with the two of them and Amanda McCulloch. Amanda is the executive director of the Data Visualization Society, is we don't agree on everything. And they'll, they'll but, but we will debate these things and, and say, well, here's why I feel differently about this. And, and force me to reconsider and go, you know what? That's a, a really valid point. I hadn't considered that before. So there's the growth comes from um, keeping an open mind and just kind of recognizing um, when when being closed to these things have harmed me. That, that, that I think I was much uh, less flexible and um, more, what's the word that I'm looking for, Stu um, um, intractable 10 years ago, 12 years ago. And I thought I had all the answers. And, and no, I don't. You know, that, 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 um, so you want, you, you want good colleagues who will give you pushback. And you want people to find the flaws. You want people to find, uh, find the errors. Hold, um, there's a really good quote um, at the end of, of the book, Mistakes Were Made But Not By Me. Uh, I wish I, I'm sorry, I can't remember who the authors are, but um, uh, uh, it's gonna take too long. I almost know certainly where the book is right behind me and can probably find the quote, but essentially it, it is, saying you know the people who point out your flaws or the or the things they're your most uh, um their greatest benefactors they're helping you grow they're helping you get better to think differently you got to challenge all assumptions so there are no what we call sacred cows you you look at everything and you examine it as if it's new for instance you you know in the background there there's a guitar you examine it and say well you know i know it's a guitar now but how could i what could I do with it to make it something totally different? How could I repurpose it and it have even greater use? So I got to challenge the existence of the guitar, right? It's like I mentioned Uber. I'm challenging the existence of the taxi business, right? How can I, how can I repurpose it? How can I do it differently, right? So thinking, you know, you have, you have thought, decisions, actions, and results. In order to change the result, the bottom line, you got to change your thought process. When you change your thoughts, the types of decisions that you make change. When the types of decisions you make change, the, the actions that you now take change, right? So you have to be able to examine how you think and why you think the way that you do. Often a lot of that comes from our environment. We're conditioned to think a particular way given our education, given our family, given our friends. But I need to intentionally think. I need to intentionally be aware of what my thoughts are, where they're coming from. I need to intentionally look at my mental model because we have mental models. All around everything we do, when you wake up in the morning and you get out of bed and you decide to go shower, there's a certain ritual that you have every day around that, right? That's your mental model around what that is. Well, if you want to do something different, say for instance, you decide to go jogging early in the morning, then now that routine changes. So your mental model around that changes, right? You have to first, in order to implement any change, any transformation, the first thing you got to do is examine that mental model. How do I, why do I see it the way that I do, right? And then I got to ask the question, how can I deconstruct it tear it down and now I got to reconstruct it right I got to build it anew so that I, it it will serve me well now all of our mental models we're not going to deconstruct because some of us serve us very, serve us very well it's only when your mental model doesn't serve you well that you do go through the deconstruction reconstruction it's like the butterfly and the caterpillar right I like to use that example 
you got the caterpillar who goes from the you, you got the cat from caterpillar to butterfly right the butterfly is not a new caterpillar it is a new entity it is a new being right the butterfly never goes back to being the caterpillar it goes through a metamorphosis of what we call the messy middle and in that this ugly little creature becomes a beautiful creature right something brand new you have to do the same thing with your thoughts you have to be able to deconstruct your thoughts just like the butterfly goes through the metamorphosis to become a a, a butterfly you have to be able to 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 do that and reconstruct it there are two parts of of thinking that are important to me um creative thinking mm. and critical thinking mm. creative and critical uh, uh, to creatively think is to expand the area of your thoughts and to critically think is to analyze any ideas carefully mm. too many people it's like they're running through life and they never take the time that good thinking requires good thinking takes time mm -hmm. it's it's almost like the difference between people who eat all their food quickly fast as they can they're just always you know, shove food in your mouth and eat fast and run and do something else as opposed to those people who take their time and relish and savor a good meal. Mm. Thinking is the same way. Too many people wrongly believe that thinking shouldn't take much time. You can rush right through it. But thinking requires, like a good meal, it requires time. Uh, if you devote the time to it and you try to expand your mind, you can be more creative in your thinking. And then if you try to analyze ideas, okay, here's what somebody has said, but what's the evidence for that? Um, do I think that's true or not? Or could it be wrong? Uh, to critically analyze takes time. Mm. So I think we devote too much time, at least in my culture right now, we devote too much time to things that don't really matter. Uh. And we don't devote enough time to things that do really matter. Uh, Socrates once said, we think about and talk about things that hardly matter at all. We, we don't give enough time to the truly important things. No. Um, and that was true of his time, it was true of our time. We entertain ourselves to death, right? We, we think about uh, the who's won the football match, who's won the, uh, the World Cup, who's won the... And that's all good, that's all fun. We should enjoy things like that, but we should also give ourselves time to think. Mm -hmm. um, and that's so uh, important. Then we can be more creative, then we can be more critical. And people think the word critical is a negative word. It just means looking carefully. Uh, considering carefully ideas before we embrace those ideas. Again, back to embracing and releasing. Mm. Critical thinking helps us know which ideas to embrace and which ideas to release. So I think exposing yourself to radically different ideas is helpful. And, and a case study I read that kind of spells this out for me is, uh, like there's a few. One is there was a hospital uh, where they were having lots of problems when a patient came in for surgery kind of going from the nurse to the doctor back to the nurse they were messing things up and and so they take the patient they go from one room to the next they like they'd leave stuff in the patient they'd have all these problems and infections and they thought like how can we think about changing this and what they did is they wound up going and bringing a formula one racing pit crew in and they had the pit crew evaluate what they were doing because in a pit crew, like in these races, the car comes in, you have no time at all to get all the tires off, get the car ready, get it back out there. And if you make a mistake, a car's gonna crash. And in the hospital, they're doing all these handoffs between different doctors and nurses and, and they, were, they were messing things up. And, and by looking at how the pit crew did their work and having the pit crew look at how they did work, they brought in these outside ideas that let them think differently and greatly reduce the number of, you know, accidents that happen in their hospital. And I think looking outside what you're doing is really important. I, I know in our area, uh, one of the first banks to be really consumer friendly was Commerce Bank. And what their CEO said is, I'm not looking at other banks. Consumers don't say, this is a bank, that's how they should, they should be. I'm looking at Target, I'm looking at Starbucks, I'm looking at all the companies that consumers love interacting with and saying, how can I be at that level? Mm -hmm. And you know, Steve Jobs for the Genius Bar, that came from the Ritz-Carlton. 
Uh, he loved the way the Ritz Carlton served people and say, I want to be like that for Apple. So I think uh, like when you want to think of new ideas, expose yourself to new things. And, and then you could sometimes see how things come together. Uh, have time where you're just sitting down with other entrepreneurs, even who aren't in your business and talking about running your businesses. Uh, and, and also I loved, I would always try to go out to dinner with clients. Like that was a great way to just think about their problems and how we can solve them. And it was also fun. Like our clients were really nice people. I'm always interested in the news. Uh, so, so I, I'm always reading, um, uh, newspapers, credible sources. Um, uh, I'm, uh, I'm a God. Yeah. Credible sources. Um, but within that, uh, I would say that, um, uh, critically thinking is is absolutely important asking myself um so when when i find something interesting or challenging um i will ask uh, who's written that um what may have been their motivation what might have been their bias uh, what might this be trying to make me think um so not just absorbing that so so i'd say that that reading as much as i can but critically thinking about the motives of the author is really important as well. Um, never trying to be too easily influenced one way or another, believing that the truth is always somewhere in the middle, in the gray, even with some of the most extreme voices um, in, uh, in the media and in the public eye. Um, I will always try to think generously about what may be their truth um, and not try to dismiss too readily even what might seem like the most extreme views always trying to maintain a level of balance uh, i think keeps me sane as well as helps me think uh, better i love reading i love reading about um history and historical figures who have done remarkable things my wife and I went to live in Rome for three months this past year, last spring, and I just loved re looking, reading and then visiting all these historical sites where these great orators, these great soldiers, great engineers building aqueducts and roads and um, sanitation and so on. I, you just, I find reading history inspiring. I'm reading a book about Thomas Edison right now, who had 1,100 patents and thousands of inventions. And I love the book on Leonardo da Vinci or some of the artists like Donatello or Botticelli or um, uh, Michelangelo or, I mean, I, I find the Renaissance period particularly fascinating. But um, I say reading is a very, very useful thing to expand your mind and help you think. Um, another thing I do a lot of is um, I love uh, meditating. I don't have a lot of time for it, but um, I, I meditate at least five minutes a day, sometimes 10 minutes, sometimes 15. It just depends on what I have. I use a, an application called Calm, C-A-L-M, but there's another one out there called Headspace and there's more. So I think they help you organize yourself and sometimes they use little lectures or sometimes, but there's the, the effect of, uh, of doing a little bit of meditation, being mindful of your, where you are in, in life and in space. And, and it's kind of, it's something I recommend highly, uh, sort of also it helps you be grateful or have gratitude towards what, what, what you've been able to, uh, be, be accomplish and be involved with and so i think that's a that's a couple of there's a couple of things there that might be might be useful um uh you know working hard is fun and interesting but you have to give a little bit of breaks too i mean so i love to run and bike ride bicycles and uh, hike and i swim and i sail boats and so so you have to have some pursuits that give you some time away from work so that you actually can enjoy life too so that's a couple of thoughts i've had expand my ability to think um oh, would it surprise you if i go back to a previous answer and say be curious <laughs> <I know laughs> <you're> <laughs> <gonna be. laughs> well no but it, it, it is i mean 
it it's when you confront her with something it's kind of like question it you know and a, and a, and a good way to question something is to say why and with an answer to that say why again and an answer to that say why again and like five whys <laughs> yeah. is a is a is a well-known technique for helping yourself to think so just questioning stuff um and the other big one i would say that i know salespeople don't do this enough give yourself time to think oh my god thinking is a really valuable thing to do but sometimes and funnily enough this is one of the challenges that i talk about and why i wrote the first book Salespeople have this busy 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 attitude they go running around they're doing lots of stuff oh rush 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 yeah doing 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 but the stuff they're doing often isn't work and because it doesn't work they have to do more <laughs> and they throw more good time after bad time because they won't just stop and say whoa hang on a minute what would be the best, best way to do it mm. so thinking time there's nothing wrong with that planned into your diary to be thinking about your account thinking about how you're going to work and then you know take taking holidays taking vacations and and just sometimes just letting your brain go you know that that's not something um there's something else that i do and i think oh, i think you'll like this actually if, if you and your wife are into this there's something else i do to stimulate my thinking I have a coach that I speak to every morning and every evening. Mm. Now you're thinking, oh, Fred, this, we can't afford this. People like you can afford a coach. My coach is a robot. I have a robot coach. So another thing for you to do, oh, this is awesome. You're going to love this. You're going to do no work for the rest of the day, is Rocky.ai. Now, .ai. Rocky is this is this a coaching robot coaching chatbot that uses artificial intelligence uses uh, language uh, to ask you questions because questions stimulate thought so for morning mindset for evening reflection i just rocky's on my phone open it up you can actually talk to it now i just tend to type because it slows me down a little bit and rocky will having picked you you pick a path that you want to really focus on so maybe it's entrepreneurship maybe it's prioritization maybe it's resilience wellness uh mine is mine's on focus at the moment and it will ask you questions you answer the question then it's using the ai to work out what the next question that you need to receive to keep you thinking wow. it's a brilliant little piece of kit very very cool um yeah. I think I think you can have a few like a week's a week's practice with a week playing with it, and it's not very expensive either. It's really not. It's uh, wow. it's very good. Absolutely. It's very good. Yeah, Rocky.ai. Rocky. Rocky. Have a look at that. Yeah. What a great question! This. How can I improve my thinking? Hmm. Ah, you know, I always look at what's happening to me. Hmm. I think um, awareness is a gift. Hmm. It's the best gift that you can give to yourself or others. Hmm. If I can be fully and completely aware in this moment, right now, it will allow me to understand how am I a cause in what I'm experiencing right now. And what is the message for me that will help me to be a better version of who I am. Mm. Because who, who, who I am is how I lead my life. Yep. And in order to improve my thinking, I need to understand, I need to go back to who I am being here in this situation. Because the being that you are is is, is driving the thinking that you have. Mm. And if I can go back and look at the thought pattern that I'm getting right now, the thoughts which are driving my behavior right now will definitely assist me to be a better version of who I am. Because if, when in order to improve your thinking, I have to improve who I am. And when I'm saying improve I am, I think that's a wrong statement. I need to revisit who I am. Mm. And if I can revisit who I am, I just need to move from one being to another being. I just need to look at my own narrative and shift my narrative. Yes. And if I can explore that who I'm being, the who part behind the thinking, I can drive a different behavior that will drive a different results altogether mm. so 
that's how I approach Mokionowski. Beautiful. It's a great question. Uh, I, I definitely speak less than many people do. And I speak more slowly than most people do. And I, uh, in doing so, I try to be deliberate with my words. Uh, I, when I was on active duty, I, I used to tell people around me that words mean things. And so you had to, you had to be precise in your language. And, and in the military, there is a precision to uh, each, each word and term has a specific meaning. Um, but I, I think that uh, in order to be uh, thoughtful, you need to be informing yourself through a variety of means. I was not a great reader as a young adult. I've eased into reading and now I read and consume books at a pretty high rate. Uh, that hasn't always been the case. Uh, I, I, I was just looking at, at my my number because I talked to some other colleagues about this, and I, you know, we're in mid December. I've read over thirty books this year. Uh, this is in addition to my academic reading that was required of the, of the PhD. So these are business books that I've read. Now, <clears throat> I've been told that the most successful executives acknowledge reading at least part of as many as 60 books per year. <clears throat> Obviously that's over a book a week. The average American does not read one book in a, in a year. So it's a skill that has to be developed. Uh, I don't, I don't say that it automatically translates to being more thoughtful, but you can't help but learn from others. If you, if you consciously try to try to, uh, take in more information. Um, I was not a big podcast person until a couple of years ago. Uh, I, I knew they were out there, but I didn't really know how to find what might appeal to me. And I've, I've only in the last few years become, uh, more attuned to, uh, what podcasts can offer as a delivery vehicle of new information. And, uh, I, I, as I take these things in a podcast or a book, I'm not trying to consume the entire thing and get every message. I think, I think that's unreasonable, but if you can get just a few things out of each book, mm. you're better for it and you'll apply it in some way, uh, you know, might be subconscious application, but it will, it will become part of your, your growing expertise. Bruce? Um, I think I, I've approved, improved it by just reading a lot. You know, I read books, I read uh, magazine articles, uh, journal articles, newspapers. So I read quite a bit on a number of different subjects. And I think, you know, how do all these things compare? So it may or may not be about thinking as a discipline, because I think there it's something where um, is maybe uh, uh, maybe individual to people about how they, you know, carve out time for thinking or or get rid of distractions if that's possible. Um, but I would say I'm always thinking, you know, I'm a pretty introspective um, person. So, uh, but a lot of it is reflection on things like what I've read or what I've maybe seen on um, something like what you and I are doing now or a television show. Um, so I feel all that helps me thinking because I feel I am good at making connections between, and this is something Drucker did a lot, you know, making connections between disparate parts of, uh, of, of thought or of things that you read. So I feel that being a big reader <clears throat> is really helpful, but then also reflecting about that, reflecting about what you read and about thinking about how does this relate to my life or my work as a leader or my work in business or whatever it might be. So I think that's a very key thing, you know, reading, observing, listening, you know, and then relating it to your life. I also take a lot of notes, you know, if I can, it's hard in conversation, but I might try to remember something and write it down later or put it into my iPhone of uh, things. So I try to keep notes on things and then go back to them. And I find that that is very, um, very helpful. And I think that's something that's, you know, easy. it's something that people can do because um, you know, just take out a pen and paper. 
uh, or, or type it into your phone. Um, uh, if you if somebody has said something that you find, you know, kind of really interesting, or you've had an, an experience that you found um, quite interesting, um, or you know they're watching your show, and you know they could pause it, or maybe if they're listening to the recording and pause it and write down some things. So I would really recommend that, and that's something that worked for me that I think probably has worked for lots of other people as well. <laughs> I hope there's some evidence of that. Uh, actually, I, I, first thing that comes to mind is I think reading is very important. There are uh, many leaders of thought out there. Now, my brain is seems to be naturally constructed to create a lot of joy for me when I connect ideas. Everybody may not be wired that way, but I think reading is uh, one way to really open yourself up to different kinds of thought, and certainly to read about thought. Um, one of the things that became a fascination for me, you were talking about uh, noise, and I believe in noise, he mentions fundamental attribution error. Uh, as one of the cognitive errors. And again, I think this thing is something that um, really shows up in emotional intelligence, and that's that uh, at, I can talk about the U.S. culture in particular. I think it's extremely prevalent here, and it may be a human thing based on survival, but I think we often judge people um, by making them responsible for how we're experiencing them. So, for instance, uh, I was in a, a job where I was the um, program manager of talent development, and I often had to deal with conflict between people in the organization. And there was one young man who was in the uh, help desk department who was particularly irascible. And people eventually totally dismissed him. I really had to work with him behaviorally to the best of my ability. But the flip side was is that we decide that somebody's behavior is who they are. And that takes me back to the idea that our emotions are not who we are. And we often identify with our emotions and, you know, take them personally and, oh, I'm a bad person because I'm having uncomfortable feelings, blah, blah, blah. But we also do that on a much bigger um, stage. And, and we will look at people and decide that it's a character flaw instead of, a product of circumstances if they're expressing themselves in a way that we're not comfortable with. So things like that, becoming aware of uh, things like cognitive errors, which is something that has been studied. Now again, some of this becomes an aspect of what is social reality. Um, and social reality is not always correct. But when you look at some of these big discoveries about thought and thinking and logic and explore those, that helps you change your thinking because it helps you separate from uh, what is perhaps negative social reality. And all of it was developed for seemingly positive reason. The other thing is meditation. I haven't talked about meditation, but I am a meditator. I do study mindfulness practices, and that is one of the things that has made me self-aware. And self-awareness is really the beginning and the foundation of emotional intelligence, and particularly as part of that emotional self-awareness. I can't believe it's taken me this long in our conversation to say that. <laughs> but uh, a big part of self-awareness is noticing your thinking. Beauty. And also, Beauty. yeah, and and, uh, and part of noticing your thinking is noticing that 
that's not always true. 